Hello and welcome to another video. So in today's video, what we'll be doing is just very quickly cover material instancing. Basically what that is, is we have our base material, which is this one over here, set up with all its color values and everything. Then we create a material instance, which is uh, these two that I created here and these two crates, where we can just open the material instance, pick the color that we want for our model, and then we'll see a change on the fly as we just like go through what color that we want there go let's put a blue there and we can even fool around with the metallic and the roughness values so this is a quick tutorial on how we get material instance so that we can like get different values onto different crates so that we can create some uh, variations in our sci-fi crate that we created so with all of that said let's just jump straight into the tutorial all right so first thing you want to do is here is our model that we created and the material that we created the mask material now if you didn't follow along with the previous videos just check the top right hand corner uh, there are the previous videos that i created and how we made this cube uh, or this sci-fi crate and how we created its basic material. So first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a copy of it. You can even make a copy of this one if you have one in your level. It really doesn't matter uh, if it's already got a material applied to it. It can be completely blank as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into the material and then just quickly cover what would be required for us to be able to create a material instance. So if you recall, I created a vector, I used a vector parameter for color. Now you could have used something else. You could have used a normal texture input, but um, this way I had a bit more control over the, the, the colors that I could choose for the model itself. Now, the one problem here is that if you have three different colors and you actually give them all the same names, let's just give this one the same name. Then they'll all take on the same attributes if you like change them. I think let's just double check here. There we go. So you see that if all three of these were called color, it would have been um, all three would have taken on the same color attribute and then it would have been completely useless. That's why when I made a copy of them and I did shift C shift V, it assigned a number to it. Now what we're going to do now is just give it a name, for instance. So let's just see first. Okay, so this color is going to be our, let's just say our base. Let's call it the base color. And this one, let's just change the color and see, this should be the trim color. Uh, Seems I swapped the two, so let's just call this one trim. And then we'll call this one the base. I'll call this the details. Okay, so now every single parameter has a, a different value. Now, you can also do this for metallic values and, and roughness value. For that, you would have to use, if you right click and you type in scalar, you use a scalar parameter. And we're gonna feed that into metallic. Then what we're going to do is, we're just gonna give it a name and call it straight up metallic. And then we're going to set the default value as one. And we can give it a slider maximum and minimum value. So we'll make the maximum value one to match up with the default value, because we previously used uh, essentially one just means it's full on metallic 0 0.5 it's half metallic so you you kind of like play around with the the values as you're busy building your model or your materials and then this one we can just add another scalar parameter and we'll call this the roughness why did i miss the h there there we go roughness all right, and we're gonna feed that into the roughness and same thing, we'll give it a slider max of one, but we'll give it a default value of 0 0.3, which is the value we used before when uh, we were using roughness. Now, 
all right that's everything um, we can also later what we're going to do later is um, see how we can fool around with um, using it for textures and things like that and we'll also play around with specular and emissive color or specular values in emissive color but for now this is all that we're going to use so we're going to save this out and i'm going to just close it once it saves and then on the material what we can do is right click and then you see right at the top there's something called create material instance you create the instance you can call it whatever you want for now i'm just I'm using the basic that i gave it mask material instance and then what you could do is just drag it onto your model. But now you notice that nothing has changed. That's because it already has the base material values assigned to it, which is already applied to this one. Let's actually apply it to all of them. So you see, this is the base values applied to it, uh, applied to these two, and this is the material instance. So let's make the material instance of both of these. So if you double click on it, then you'll see here on your left hand corner that you have color values. So what you can do now is if you tick them, you can select them on the fly. And then if you can see here properly, uh, let's just move this out. Let's make this smaller that now you can select values. Let's do that. Uh, change that yellow also into like a dark blue and change the trim color into something like a white almost and there we go now also what you can do because we set up a scalar parameter for for um, the metallic and the roughness value you can go like okay i want this thing to look a little bit more plastic so no more metal set the value to zero there we go that looks horrible and the roughness value you can push up so now you see that's like a completely matte almost color or you could push it down and then you see it's very glossy so that's how you create the material instance so this is so that you can play around with um, different color variations uh, for your model and uh, what you can do is for instance you can duplicate the material instance uh, what I would like to cover on is how to set this up in a blueprint so that uh, it would be a little bit easier for you to just drag the model in and change the values per model rather than having to create a material instance for every single model that you put on but you can do that you can just duplicate if you're just creating a basic scene um, you can just like change the values around a little bit on a, on a different instance uh, save it out and then like okay i want this screen to look like that and i want but always remember that your your mask, your basic material that you set up, the mask material, will always look the same. It will not be changed by any values that you change on your material instance. Okay, so with that said, I hope you guys like this tutorial. It's a very short tutorial. This is just the very basics and getting you into how to change values on material instance. Now, also take note that this does help a lot because we did use a mask on our on our um, model, so. It does give us a lot of uh, room to play around with the different colors and to set up something that can actually look very amazing. So that's why I always prefer working around uh, or working with the mask colors when I'm working my models with Blender. If you have something like Substance a Painter or Substance Designer, it's a little bit easier to set up like very good materials straight up and just import them into Unreal. So if you're using something like Blender, you have to use a few tricks to actually just get around and make sure that things work the way that you want it. So, once again, if you guys like what you saw, please leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Support me on Patreon. Uh, I am looking into opening a Discord channel in the near future, uh, but I would have to get up, uh, probably get more videos uploaded in the next two weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I will be a lot more active and I'm trying to grow the channel. So that like and that subscription really will help. So if you guys want to see more on how you can create your own things, and if you want to see free content, uh, more free content pop up, then please leave a like and subscribe. I thank you all very much for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.